Hey everybody, welcome back to the Making It Music podcast. I am, as always, Heather, your host. I hope you guys had a fantastic week. Um, it's been another week of madness, another week of a bit of boringness, I guess that's the word. Uh, where it seems like we're doing the same thing every day, but people are picking up new hobbies, which is great. I'm seeing more and more people gardening and cooking and painting and picking up all these new things that they've never had a chance to do before. And I'd, I'd like to say to everyone that don't just put these aside because life is going to start coming back to normal now. We're entering phase one. We're going to go back hopefully sooner rather than later into the old way of life. I want to say don't give up on those passions that you've picked up during quarantine. Like if you find something that you're really loving, make sure you keep time to do that in the future you never know you might find a passion that is burns brighter than anything that you've ever done before you know like there's so many musicians in the world who have started off their careers doing something else so like gene simmons from uh, kiss the bassist and and co-lead singer of kiss he was an assistant to the editor of vogue before he became a musician Uh, johnny cash was a military code breaker Uh, kim deal of pixies she was a biochemical lab technician and then you have brian may the astrophysicist and ireland's answer to brian may we've got our very own (laughs) hey i made him cringe already yay Yuli, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast this week. Welcome to Make It In Music. How are you doing? There you go. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> no bother at all. Look, the minute like the minute I saw Astrophysics as well, I was like, that is the coolest thing uh, oh, ever. <laughs> like, here's me just like being like, ooh, music. I'm going to go study music. But you're like, no, I like music, but I'm going to go study the stars. Like, <laughs> <laughs> not astrology, but like, ask, you know, space physics. Like, you do you have a horoscope if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah. You know? It could be like it could be it could be a more fruitful career path than than astrophysics. I'm telling you. <laughs> well, m- music seems to be a more fruitful career path for you, anyway. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Well, look, bef- before we do a deep dive into yeah. your music, which uh, Yuli has you your first release in 2018, and you've released like ten tracks so far. And uh, I don't want to mm. try categorize your music, except sure. it just grooves like. There, it's just everything you write just has this solid groove to it and it's class and it it's we're gonna di- i'm gonna dive more into it later but we like doing this game i'm making music kind of just like ease everybody into the whole fact that i'm gonna like dive into your brain for the next half an hour um <laughs> it's called uh, this or that right so i'm gonna cool. give you uh six artists or six bands or something like that uh, and you choose i'll give you two at a time and you choose whichever one you want so First one that comes, first one comes to your mind. Like you might change, change your mind in like five <laughs> okay, minutes time. Okay. Okay. okay? Cool. First one I have is just because I knew you were a bit of a jazz head, so I picked two uh, big jazz laser, leaders. Okay. So I've okay. got Count Basie versus Duke Ellington. Duke Ellington. Nice. I would have been a Duke girl myself as well. I like Duke Ellington. Okay. Next one I have for you, probably just because like uh, your guitar style and your singing style. Um, okay. Charles Bradley versus Otis Redding. Oh. Come on. Yay! <laughs> um Oh wow. I oh damn. Okay, Otis. Yeah. Otis? Otis awesome. Yeah. Okay, and then I have uh, one um because I was going through all of your um all your different social medias and stuff like that. And on your Spotify you have this big list of like loads of music that you really like. Mm, yeah. And I saw like one thing I noticed while looking at your playlist, the amount of bands that have brothers in the title. It's ridiculous. Like so many <laughs> bands have brothers in the title. Um, so I decided to pick two brothers, group of brothers that you seem to like. Okay. Okay. Two different sides of the spectrum around the mm. same time. The Almond Brothers band versus the Eilie Brothers. Ooh, Eilie Brothers. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah a bit yeah, more definitely. funky, a bit more groovy for your. Definitely. Yeah. Like, that, well, that, that's, that's so tough. That's so tough because like, I suppose I would have been introduced to the Almond Brothers way later than I would the Isley Brothers, mm. the, early, the early Brothers. And I just can't, especially like now, I think uh, like with the time of the year that it is and the weather that we're having and stuff like that, I'd be more leaning on like the Isley Brothers. Yeah. Every now and again, I'd, I'll fucking... I'll, excuse me I'll turn on uh, I'll turn on Whip and Post and I'll crank it the first thing in the morning. Oh, you know, that, get that is... In the morning. <laughs> like, that song is 
amazing but there was a group of people a group of musicians in my year when i was in bim who did that for like an end of term performance and oh my god like it was in the button factory and they played it and i think everyone was just like like swaying aggressively yeah. from side to yeah, side. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So good. And I, think, you know, I used to take a couple of, before this happened, I was going out to the, the West a good bit and I would, like, the their live at a Fillmore East album was like a staple. Anytime I hit the road, I'd always put that on or whatever to the annoyance of whoever was in the car. Like, <laughs> uh, again. again. <laughs> A yes again <laughs> there's driving albums though there's certain albums Definitely, that just yeah. work when you're driving like and there's mm-hmm. some that don't because you'll crash the car um yeah. but like that that album is a good album for me it's um stevie wonder songs in the key of life very good i love that except when it comes to the end part i start getting a bit too into it and i close my eyes and that's just not good for anybody i have to make sure i pull over <laughs> for that part <laughs> But sure, let's dive into your music. Um, okay. As I said, you released stuff in back in 2018 and you've mm-hmm. had constant tracks being released since then. So you talked a good bit about like your beginnings, but I want to do just a quick talk about it. Your beginnings was in classical guitar and then you expanded mm. from that. But you didn't really come from a very musical family. You were, like I've seen in different interviews. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. What was the drive behind you that made you pick up the guitar? Well, I guess a lot of us pick up guitar when we get when we hit those teen years, but like picking up the bass and then the trumpet of all things, like <laughs> what was the pull there? Well, I, I'm a saxophone player. I love the brass, like so Amen. Yes, amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> like I love the trumpet, but when you ask people a lot of people will go for brass instruments unless they have someone in the family who plays brass instruments like i had my cousin you know my cousin always playing euphonium and tuba so i was like oh i want to play something cool like that um so what was it for you was it something like was music just (laughs) hit you in a different way than the rest of your family i i think it might have um like even even in terms of like listening to music my my family wouldn't be a big music listening family and my dad would my dad obviously would what would would have his records that he goes to but he's not um I, I suppose you, you, the term you'd use would be a muso or something like that. You know what I mean? He doesn't have like a vast collection. He knows what he likes and he goes to certain things. And then my mom doesn't listen to too much music at all. Um, she gets behind like emotional music, like the the, the 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 stereotypically emotional piano music that you'd find in those videos about dogs people find on the street and then rehome and stuff like that. Like she loves that sort of stuff, but she's not like, yeah. She must have loved it, mama. And she did, yeah, but she kind of just didn't know what was going on. She was like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, Sorry about me, this is great. Yeah, 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 bless her. Like, sometimes I just don't think my mom is really, I think maybe a couple of people have said this before, that they're just not really sure what I'm saying. And I think mom was very much in, in that boat. She was just like, eh, yeah, it sounds nice. I don't know what you're saying, but. Uh, One um, thing I actually go, just from what you said there, I was um, yeah. I was watching the you playing live Um the RT sessions and I'm a, I'm a singing teacher myself and I couldn't get over how much I could understand of you with the way you hold your mouth and you sing like oh, you keep, oh, ev- God, you keep yeah. everything you keep everything lifted but it's quite like a small space you know but I could still understand all the words you were saying when you're performing and I was like that's that's pretty like have you ever seen Jessie J singing in a box no she can like sing a full song like like holding her mouth like as if she's holding her breath like she can properly sing a song no way like and you can hear every word she's saying yeah it's from her like being a theater kid and being stuck in audition rooms all day and just being like oh i'll send you a link I'll to it like out. it's ridiculous <laughs> i'll have to check that yeah. out that is sweet have you ever dived into like the your voice as an instrument as well the actual like mechanics of it mm. i used to do singing lessons for a bit yeah um i was there for yeah it was a couple of years never like went down like the grades route or anything like that mm-hmm. but it was it was something that we did for a while it was like two or three years maybe so there was some like this is when i was much younger um so kind of like to go back to, to yeah. like your original question i feel like i just went on a bit of a tangent there and so it's a great off, yeah definitely um we we started off playing um classical guitar when i was like about 11 or 12 i actually picked it up when i was seven or eight and hated it um (laughs) the first time around put it away and then the right time the right place um 
I was <laughs> when I was like eleven or twelve. Um, I was between choosing. No, I wasn't between. Actually, there was like an opportunity to do like French little French classes after school and primary school, or and and guitar classes, and they weren't on at the same time or anything like that. And um, or like I don't know, like a tenor or something like that for for a couple of weeks. And uh, so I had like. The, the 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 two like the checks as it were and I felt really really bad about like my parents like paying for both so I hid the one for French and I, I, like in the in the glove compartment of, of the car and then uh, I just did guitar and said and they found it a couple of weeks later and it was like there's a tenor here what's that and I was like uh, uh just rushed to, to, to do the thing for both sorry that's another digression did you ever well, learn French then uh, no. <laughs> It's grand. Ah, maybe I pick it up with like memorize or something. Yeah, Duolingo. Those apps they're Duolingo. meant to be great. I've I've downloaded yeah. Duolingo so many times to be like I'm gonna learn because my godson is like half yeah. like French oh. Swiss. I'm uh-huh. like I'm gonna learn it this week, and then it's like I'm gonna pick up my Irish again so I can like not just talk to my friend family when we're away. We want to talk about people in restaurants. Like yeah. I can like talk about <laughs> actual <laughs> Irish. Never happens. Yeah. Never happens. <laughs> So you started off in classical guitar and then you started getting into like punk and like rock bands. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> okay. really cool. But you I'm not from all the reading I've done of you, was there like a definite moment that was like a switch that you're kind of just like, okay, I'm switching to music now? Or were these two kind of astrophysics and music, these two passions kind of running alongside of each other for a very long time before the switch was made? Um, I don't think I did. This may not be the right use of the words. My friend Stephen's probably going to watch this and be like, roll his eyes and just be like, Ugh, I told him not to say that. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, I, like I, ad hoc is not the word, but like it's, science and, and, and astrophysics for me is more of <laughs> it was actually more of a fringe thing, do you know? Yeah. So, uh, I was maybe 13 or 14. I was actually 14, maybe 14 or 15 when I started playing in bands with them, the guys in school, obviously doing like kind of like punk and emo covers and having fringes every color under the sun and stood belts and like all the stuff. And we used to practice in Fall Out Boy for life. Amen. Like the, the Holy Trinity, Fall Out Boy, Panic at the Disco, and My Chemical Romance. Yes. And like, there's like there's one of those three. Like if you were in and around, if you're knocking around in the, in between those years of whatever, 2000 to 2015, and old enough to like really yeah to music and be angsty, one of those three was there, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. So if you had your awkward teen years between like. <laughs> I don't know, because it's 2006 and 2012, then you probably probably got in there a little bit. <laughs> uh, but sorry, yeah, so I was doing, I was doing, playing in, in like those punk bands and stuff like that. It was Off the Wall, it was Out of Nowhere, there was Milestones, which actually did pretty well. Um, there was Over Me and Under, which was a, which is kind of like a different band. Their guitarist was too young to go on tour with them. And uh, one of the guys who was playing in Milestones, one of my best friends, Jack, uh, he, is, he was in that band and they were so annoyed that they were missed down a guitarist because he was too young. His mom wouldn't let him go on tour. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Imagine I know. that being the reasons like my mom won't let me go. Like, it's not like legally I can't go. It's like, no, my mom won't <laughs> let me go. <laughs> so funny. But they asked me to go. And by the end of it, like, we were all locked in Glasgow, um, just staying in a friend of our Joy's house. By the end of it, Jack was in bits and he was just like, man. We love you, and you're basically in the band now. Do you want to stay? And I was just like, yeah, dull. <laughs> so, yeah. So I ended up playing with them for a while, and when I got into college, that's when kind of classical guitar fell by the wayside. Like I, I got a whole ass in it when I was younger because, mm. like, I was I was actually like a heavier kid, and um, I wouldn't have had like too many friends like in the estate or anything like that or something like that I always kind of got like the butt end of the stick it's fine I'm over it it's grand um I just got a flashback to my own childhood so you're good <laughs> yeah, yeah I know so like I was able to you know that like energy that the kids can just that it's like it's like kids who are fearless when they start up like skating or something like that they just mm-hmm. throw themselves around and they just do it for hours and hours and hours and they don't care and that's kind of like what it was like with me I just got in it just right time right place i was able to invest time into it and i enjoyed it because and so like obviously the trajectory at which i got a little bit better went quickly kind of plateaued and then when i got to classical guitar i just did its thing um which is sweet I'm very very grateful for it to have had that um but yeah college came around 
And when I was in secondary school, it was like, I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do, as most people don't. Yeah. And um, I... <sighs> I got the, I actually failed physics for for most of for most of fifth year. I had a bet with my with my secondary teacher that if I got um he took a bet with me that if I got an A one in physics, then uh, he would buy me all my drink for the debs. So I drank him <laughs> dry. And you got an A one. <laughs> yeah, 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 Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't until like late until sixth year that it all started to make sense, if you want to call it that. Yeah. And so I was. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I had this thing where I was like, um, I'll go to Maynooth maybe, and I'll do, um, I'll do a double honors. Like Maynooth had a double honors thing where you could split a degree between um, chemistry and physics, and then I could do like a H dip afterwards, and mm. I just get into teaching. That would be sweet. I'd like, I like the idea of teaching. I think it's something that's agreeable with me, and I like science, and I can just do music on the side. Yeah, so I and you get all the summers off. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so like I, I thought I could do I could, thought I could do music on the side. And um after after uh, the faculty are great, but after the first semester of chemistry or whatever, uh, the first term was like No. Good you have a look. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I thought it was it was fine. It was just such a turnaround. And I think it was because like because I was doing general science at first, the introduction <laughs> The, to bring everyone up to speed, they had to take on a lot of what I had done already in leaving cert chemistry, mm. which is fine. So I, maybe I checked out a little bit earlier. And then when the stuff started to really turn on and get quite difficult, everyone was like on the same playing field. But I was just like, uh, you know what I mean? I had already mentally checked out. Um, I was outside. It, it was like uh, before the summer holidays rolled around, before my first year exams. I was outside with, a, with an old friend, a childhood friend of mine, Gareth. Um, we're just and you switch outside having a say we're chatting we were both unhappy or not unhappy but both just like mm, a bit unsure it was mm. late it was a clear evening and um, it wasn't this big like ah looking at the stars i want to do space stuff <laughs> it wasn't like that it was like it was it was a little bit like that we were having a smoke and we were just kind of looking and chatting and it was like could be kind of cool because i knew that like astrophysics is technically like my second choice mm -hmm. i had like loads of stuff in minute and then i had all like trinity and ucd way down the bottom just in case because it was like ugh, no <laughs> i don't wanna, i don't i just don't want to be in college in dublin don't be so, stuck with the dubs yeah like i had enough years would you go away but um, <laughs> yeah i wanted wanted a bit of that wanted a bit of that country but not country living so yeah sorry i'm, I'm rambling here but um i was with gareth and then i turned around and i said yeah cool space stuff um let's let's try it so it wasn't like i had this like burning passion yeah. or fever and desire to go to go to go do space stuff i was just like that could be kind of cool you know and it was so you had music running alongside all of this the entire time you were Parallel. just to yeah. totally yeah 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 and it then i saw from what i was reading it was like a trip to japan was the thing that kind of the straw that broke the camel's back for you kind of made you switch <laughs> yeah. yeah kind of I, su I suppose that you could consider that like a like a point um i was away for six months doing an internship i was doing a um, I was in I was interning in a physics lab in Okinawa. It's cool. It's about like a three-hour flight from Tokyo. It's a small so island cool. in the south. Yeah, it was dope. It was really cool. It's a weird place. It's a little microcosm in itself. It's got this weird like clash of east and west because there's such like a military presence. So there's mm -hmm. a, like a, a heavy American presence there from the war, uh, from 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 the forties or whatever. I would think it was after, um, and then. The Ryukyu Islands, which Okinawa used to be called, uh, they were known until like the 1800s at some point. I think it was late 19th century. Again, someone correct me if I'm wrong. Don't, don't quote me on that. Um, they were a country in itself. And then kind of Japan were like, gives that, you know, <laughs> like, as, as colonial Paris see that? to do. Back I, I, I want that one. <laughs> do you see that little cute little island? I'll have that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so they, they took them on board and they lost their kind of sovereignty or whatever they still it's it's strange they have like um they as as people you tend to see kind of like a pacific islander buzz is like a laid back like relaxed connected to the sea and nature yeah. sort of buzz to them but they've still got the um they've still got some characteristics or like i suppose like mannerisms is not the right word but they've got um they've got a very um japanese way way of being to them like it's quite bureaucratic it's quite polite to the point where you're gonna go 
mental um, and it's nothing's like nothing's like straightforward yeah. like japan is great but like even getting a sim card or something like that things that we take for granted is there's quite quite a few few hoops that you have to jump through and it's, really? kind of, it's kind of pro, pros and cons yeah, yeah 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 exactly and like mobile banking or something like that yeah chat to you later like you've Good got luck. a th- like a big you have to bring out these big tomes that have like all your records and stuff like that like they still they're like some pen and paper and stuff like that How and i don't know so if that's advanced in some ways and that so like not in others that's I, I, that's what i mean that's that's this that's so so baffling mm. like they had like that they had like that post-war boom that that post-war boom in the economy or whatever when it came to like making products cheap you've got like um a good quality products that are cheap and exporting them like you got like panasonic you got sony all of yeah. these technological goods that they just they were just like yep yeah, cool i'm not sure what was actually the driving force behind that but that got them out of a like a post-war rut basically mm. they, were, they were they were in bits but um yeah so there's a huge like advance a huge jump in um in their in, in their economy and the, and the technology that they were using but still like it's just I don't know it's like it's like a new the new school things the actual inanimate objects are all new school but the mentality and stuff like that is all old school and pretty like down down the middle you know what I mean and it's not like it's hindered them at all they're obviously still like one of the most economic and technologically advanced nations out there definitely not the most progressive or forward thinking by any means Mm. um there's still quite a lot of um yeah they, they still kind of struggle with with kind of some social issues and, and how they treat people how some people are seeing in their society not to paint them with a with a broad stroke but yeah i suppose every country has its quirks sure we're yeah. backwards yeah. everyone's <laughs> a little bit backwards <laughs> you know what i mean and after so. this this mess it's going to get even worse <laughs> but yeah. so what after that trip was that kind of the the thing for you after that you're kind of just like look i'm going to just finish this off and then yeah Mm. Then switch over. Yeah, it was six months long, but that was long enough. That was um, it was uh, six. It was a six month trip. I was not doing much music. I mm. was doing. It wasn't even like labor. Into, it, it was. It was heavy duty in terms of like the actual like acad- academic side, like the learning and stuff like that. It was quite hands on in terms yeah. of the experiments and the work I was doing. Um, but I, I, I just kind of. I had had, um, I had had, I had had enough. Yeah. Not that I was like fed up with with science. I was just like, after this, I think I'm going to because it was basically like what um, doing a PhD would be like, or doing like, it was kind of like a flavor for what like that kind of line of work might be like, mm. which is maybe what I was thinking of going the route that would have made more sense for me to go there, do a post grad and get like, I don't know, get yourself set up with like a master's or a PhD, try find a college do some research, get tenure, get it, start a group, blah, 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 all this sort of stuff, um, and go on the grind, you know? Yeah. And would have been cool, would have been sweet. I actually was playing with the idea of uh, trying to get involved with gravitational wave physics. Um, there's a couple of units around the world. Um, it would have been really, really cool. And that's something that I still kind of, like, play around with. Like, there was this huge... There you was never know. Weird, you never know. Yeah, you never know. Um, but, yeah, I think my brain is actually starting to go to mush, so probably not, but anyway... <laughs> um but yeah so after the six months i was like i think i just want to take a while and just do music because i got to like mess around and like i don't know make make beats with my housemate and kind of like play around and stuff like that like there was a stage where like everyone was getting annoyed at us because we would like always be like freestyling at each other it's like you wake up in the morning and then you're like you're making breakfast and you'd start spitting i'm just like oh because what i you just started you just started rhyming in japanese and i just couldn't get over it i was like i have something on my laptop i've got some (laughs) i've got some stuff you just go you just go do your thing Um, so mm. you it's between when you started off in 2018 and now so Mm. a year and a half you've released 10 tracks which is is it 10 yeah yeah, 10 like an incredible amount of work to be brought out by a new artist in the first year and a half like so (laughs) did you have a lot of this like kind of back catalogued or was this is this all just like the love of it just keeping turning things out I actually thought my turnover rate was pretty low, so thank you for making me see otherwise. Very good. Um, like, uh, I think, I think, J Town hanging out with Okinawa for the six months was the crux. There was one stage. This will answer two questions for you. There's one stage. I was. It was like November. Um, one of my favorite artists, one of my favorite albums ever, is um, is um, Rising Sun by Takia Kurita, He's a Japanese trumpet player. He's based in New York, uh, but Japanese born. 
um he i actually went to check it if he was on tour while i was over there because it was like i'm not going home for christmas so i'm just going to stay here maybe i'll fucking uh, excuse me i'll take a trip and uh lo and behold he was in he was uh, he was in osaka so got myself a cheap flight went to see him I was blown away i was like it I just the whole time I was like, I couldn't I couldn't get over how how good that was and to be actually be able to see him after listen after just having such a fully formed idea of what he is and what his music is and to have that like just from like listening to him and then had to have that completely flipped on its head because like it's a it's a jazz gig there's no there's go, it's not yeah. going to be what you expect really you know it's going to be a little bit different every time um and uh, yeah that was it that was the moment I was like as soon as I go back home. I'm going to work for ages and then just save up and get myself a trumpet and then just start doing less. So it was very, very late to it. So that's, that's how the whole trumpet thing. Thank you, Takia. So you've only started <laughs> trumpet most for, like recently. Uh, what's it? What year did I get back? I suppose. Yeah. Kind of on and off. Cause I was doing lessons for a little bit. Uh, when did I get back? Um, it was like maybe it was like after the summer in 2017 maybe when i bought one and then started then taking lessons and then there was a period when i was like working loads and not really able to practice so it's kind of like it's coming up to maybe like three years or maybe like two years being active with it tones great man great Uh, thanks (laughs) (laughs) you should uh it's all stitched together you should see me when i'm like (laughs) Which you should see, like even yesterday, I said a clip that I was working on. I was working on a trumpet a bit for a friend of mine called Paj, and uh, great artist, by the way, super super groovy. I'll send you stuff if you haven't checked him out. Hey. Paddy Gren- Brennan, Brennan, Brennan. Um, but I, there's like a little clip of me just like cursing like a sailor, leaning in, like after and before like a little trumpet. It just sounded like a fart noise in the end. And I don't know how I haven't got any noise complaints from like my neighbors or like my family. So yeah, big big ups to them for letting me do my thing. <laughs> oh my god. Even Same a neighbor of mine they turned around like I was on I was on the bat I was just outside the other day and a neighbor turned around to me and was like, yeah Mate, have you been have you been trying to learn a new instrument or something? <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, I took up the trumpet a little while ago. I'm sorry. Like, oh. He's like, no, it's just grand. It's it's just better that you're like you know do using your time productively as opposed to you know just drinking or just messing around doing doing nothing like we are. And I was just like, I didn't want to be like I'm actually recording for people. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually my job. <laughs> oh, it's great you're doing the music, you know. Yeah. So great yeah. you're still doing the music. Oh god. Yeah. But to go into like your sound mm. and this is something that um uh my my man of mine Keen is uh, works with yourself and we mm-hmm. both I was introduced to your music by him. And we've always like sat down and talked all about your music and stuff like that. Um okay. we we do a lot of the uh, the my the show that we're like, you're going to be on the Yuli is going to be on the, the uh, Garden Gig Show on Quarantine FM tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be having another mini interview and playing a whole bunch of Yuli's tunes as well as some of the other tunes <laughs> that he's been involved in. So definitely tune into that. But he helps me a lot with uh, putting those programs together and stuff like that cool. and uh, talking about the different types of music. And your sound is quite like lo-fi, grassroots type of really just chilled, funky, groovy type of tunes. Okay, but well, it's, it sounds like it's analog recorded just by mm. the, the way it mm-hmm. sounds, right? <laughs> and that made me, th- it makes me think a lot of like Matt DeMarco and his stuff. Okay? Interesting, okay. And then I was thinking about one thing that Matt DeMarco said that um, when people turn around to him, they're like, oh, how do you do it? Like, what's the secret? And his, and this is a direct quote from Matt DeMarco, get your head out of that Ableton shit, you moron, Right. Like yeah, he hates it. Problem. He's yeah. he's loves analog. I just want like from listening to your music, it sounds analog. But do you record it that way? Are you part of this like analog elitism that's starting to develop? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, I know it. I know it well. I know it well. And it's sweet. Like it's tricky. It's it's an art in itself. Like if you can record to tape and you can record analog and do it well and do it clean and get it done efficiently. You, psh, props like that's that's amazing that made me roll my eyes that mark to marco uh, that mark to marco quote don't bash people for whatever medium yeah they it's like create. gate the gatekeeping Freak. of lo-fi like you can't do that oh, come on yeah like, oh that whole mark to marco thing anyway it's great salad days as whopper but just after that i was like yeah i'm kind of over it um 
Anyway, 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 anyway. No, I am not. I am a big, big fan of Ableton. I'm, I'm currently using Ableton at the moment. And I feel like, yeah, I, like when I, when, I, when I started releasing, I was playing around with different, different ideas and different textures. And like, I was, for the most part, like I'm not trained by any means. I'm just poking around and I pick up hints and tips off people who would be involved with music or like, pick up little snippets of information. So I'm probably not well informed at all when it comes to the actual process and the ins and outs. Like if I were trying to break down like what I do and stuff like that, a lot of it. You I have just, your method. I have my method and I have it, like realistically when you're making music or whatever, you, ju- you kind of just need your ears, mm-hmm. you know, you need to, you need to trust your ears. And if like, if, if it's not working and it doesn't sound right, okay it's it's handy to be able to articulate exactly where you're going wrong or like what thing in the chain is doing the weird thing or like whether you should move your compression threshold or whatever like, i don't yeah. know what that means i just like <laughs> poke around till it sounds good and then if like people point out red flags to me they're like that's something that you definitely shouldn't be doing yeah and if it's not making an overall if it's not if i take that away and it's not an overall detriment to the to the to the song overall then okay cool okay it will get rid of it but as i say I have just been poking around with Ableton for a long ass time. And um, yeah, I've kind of got, I found something that works. But the old school texture thing, I think that just kind of comes from, I, I, everyone kind of like has that, even if it's not of our time as such, everyone kind of like has a nostalgia for a thing that they didn't, yeah. that for a time that they didn't like live in or that they didn't experience music in or whatever. And I just kind of happened across that like dusty, muddy, texture you know that like makes it sound like mm. something out of the 70s or whatever you know what I mean and so it's just it just works yeah so the whole <laughs> thing of you you weren't going out of your way to try and make it sound 70s were you not it just kind of happened because oh, like okay I was even I was even I was playing around with this like quite clean for a good while before I released like the first UD track I was doing this um I had this um I suppose uh, the easiest way to describe it would be to talk about other artists. I had this like Damien Rice thing on the go, um, quite quiet, quite delicate. Um, it was all uh, like acoustic drums as well as opposed to samples, which was an absolute nightmare to try and mix. Like I even like got into it to the point where I was asking guys in work, Asro, and um, it's like, you know, at the album, oh, um, from from Damien Rice, who was like, do you like to see he would have been quite well known and I, I can't remember who who actually like recorded who was the actual session drummer on that um wouldn't surprise me if it, was, if it was g or something like that but anyway i was like what do you think that setup is or what does that sound like to you what about that kick it's just like fluffy and it's full and it's like kind of dull there's no real like there's no yeah. click off it or anything like that what do you think that is and i was even to the point where i was like piecing together like this picture of how they recorded that album that's how into it i was and i just scrapped it because i was like i couldn't make it sound good um I think there's a demo somewhere, but then I was just, I don't know. It was like, it was listening to Steve Lacey or something like that. I had been introduced to Steve Lacey and I was, the, and like, I was like, I, I was impressed at the fact that like his songs were just so simple. Take a loop, sit it there, let it do its thing. And then just let the melody and the, let the instruments do the talking on top of that. Mm. And then you got, you got a little, you got a little bagger. And I was like, okay, cool. So for him, for whatever reason, must have like went in subconsciously or whatever. That's kind of like the next trial, I suppose, that I did. And uh, I had that, I just like found a little loop on Ableton. I was like, okay, this is sweet. That's actually weird. That snare pattern's weird, but whatever. I'll just sit it there. And then just started playing around with uh, my particular tuning. And um, yeah, yeah. I just had the little the little soulful mama riff and it just worked. And I was like, okay, cool. We'll roll with this. And I got, I got, I got, I got giddy and I got excited. I was like, sweet. I think I wasn't like, oh, I found my thing, but I was like, I feel really good about this to the point where I'd want to actually share it with people. So yeah. I knew that was a good sign because I hadn't hit that before. <laughs> That's awesome. Own, so, yeah. That's the greatest feeling ever when you feel that you finally create something. You're like, I want to share this. This this feels good yeah. enough to like yeah. stand around. There's one thing that's across all your bios. And mm. it was, it's a quote from Shane McCauley um, from Sold Out magazine. So right. he wrote this, um, wrote this about you, what, back in like 2019, right? So it was after, okay. it was a bit after you started releasing your stuff. Um, but he said, from a version of the 70s that didn't happen. 
Okay. (laughs) Which is such a good quote. And it's used across the board and like all your bios. And Mm. obviously that resonates with you a lot. Like when you read that quote, did you hear what he was hearing then? Like did it click with you then? It's like, oh, actually yeah <laughs> that makes I think, a lot of sense <laughs> i think shane is actually quoting another friend of mine because I, I that was yeah yeah that was i uh, was, was looking it. everywhere to find out who like who said that quote and i thought Sorry, yeah. i thought i found it thought I found, yeah. screw That's you okay. shane hey okay shane. No, don't, worry, shane. Sherlock. don't worry sherlock it's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good your deduction skills have led you astray <laughs> but, um, it was uh, it was it was uh, my friend Evan Evan Carmody or Ev Car actually who said that the debut release on uh, <laughs> on Anne Friends Records the other day which is a good good friend of mine brilliant genius musician um, born in Limerick raised in Kildare he's a good dude um, he, we were sitting on the we were sitting on the we were sitting on the canal I think it was like after after I'd released Keeping It Simple. It was sunny. I think it was like in the spring of 2019. I can't really remember what it was. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was, we were, we were just talking about myself. It was still early days. And uh, what was, what's the name of that cafe? Either way, it's just, it's just on the, it's just on the canal. And um, he was chatting away and he was like, he kind of asked me the same thing. He was like, how would you describe it? Or I was like, I'm not really sure without using other bands as a point of reference. You know, I always struggle with that. And he was like, yeah, I hate that. I kind of hate that question myself. But I was thinking about it the other day. And it's like, it's like your music from like a, like an alternate universe or something like that. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like it's from the seventies, but it's not actually the seventies. It's like a version of the seventies that never happened. But, you know? Yeah. I was just thinking about that the other day and I was just staring at him like, you're you're a genius oh my god <laughs> it's like that's so fitting like i just it's never would have been able though. to articulate it like that yeah you know because it's got like that whole like but modern retro thing it's like it's mm. a throwback with with some kind of like deep modern pop sensibilities or whatever you know what i mean it sounds old but there's some there's some new tricks there kind of i suppose if you want yeah. to call it that. yeah and when it comes to you sitting down and your writing style are you mm-hmm. still kind of do you still like going with that uh, mentality again of going for a kind of a simple idea and expanding and then just using kind of the different sounds to make it into a tune instead of being trying to throw the kitchen sink at it off the bat mm, yeah it kind of it, i like i ping pong between two i ping pong between like i was like getting everything down that's in my head at any one time because like, i get never like and, and just starting with a, a small little idea and trying to expand and trying to like flesh it out or trying to use that as a solid starting point i am um, I never kind of like try I never go sit down and say okay gotta try right I've gotta write Sometime. something you know what I mean? yeah exactly like I just kind of I try to avoid it if at all possible because it just doesn't work and it wigs me out and obviously I don't want my baby <laughs> my yeah. music to, to wig me out nobody wants that you know you don't want it to be like a chore or anything um obviously there are times where I need to get the finger out and be like okay like I should probably yeah like I'm 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 actually all for because the amount of time that I have to write the, the amount of time that I have to write that's at my disposal or whatever is so limited because like I'd work whatever 40 hours a week I'd work like Monday to Friday I only really have like certain evenings or like weekends to write and you can't you can't just turn it on either like I would uh, I would put in like a full shift on a Saturday and I would like sit there for for eight hours or whatever and I would noodle and I would play and if I don't have anything okay that sucks but like you just just got to let whatever comes out, comes out, you know? And if you get lucky, then dead. If, like if a little thread starts poking its way out of the jumper, pull it and, and, and see what happens, you know? Um, That's an awesome so sometime, way Yeah, you just, just see where the thread and see, see where you end up, you know? Because um, it's, it's a really good thing and it's a special thing. Like when you have, when it, like you get an idea that you can chase down to completion, like that's, it's pretty sweet. Um, so yeah, I, it really depends what, what way I'm feeling. There'll be days when I've like loads of like ideas that are born out of just like playing off the other instruments that I've laid down before it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and there's countless demos of me just kind of like, <laughs> just like little vocal <laughs> ideas or it's stuff I don't want to forget. And then I end up forgetting that the whole thing exists. And yeah, there's a whole, like, I have a folder on my desktop or on my, on my hard drive rather. It's just like album of ideas and it's like there's about 10 to 15 folders of stuff that was from last year and now i've got another one that's like from like this year alone i'm just like i'm never gonna i'm just never gonna get i'm just never gonna get finished um 
but yeah so i try, i do i do i'm a big fan for just like just churning through like mm-hmm. ideas or little things sometimes it can be a bit boxy with my writing um i've noticed that kind of like more and more with the like demos that i put together but it's fine like if i feel good about it and i'm like yeah sometimes i can kind of give myself a little bit of a slap on the wrist because like i don't like flesh it out like fully or whatever you know but there's never really a point where a song is done but like maybe sometimes i'm just kind of ticking ticking structure boxes and getting things out of the way like i do like sometimes i find that i can get impatient with songs mm. and i when i'm listening to songs even you know um and it's a terrible thing you know just be like i should let i should just like let this sit and like breathe and do its thing but there i'm finding that like more and more there comes a point and it's sooner and sooner where i'd be like i'm either into this or not and i don't know whether that's like my taste changing or whether i i don't, I don't know what it is you know well, it seems like you're you sit that. down and you give yourself like you've you've made this into something that's that's structured but at the same time free moving because it's structured like you say you sit down on a Saturday and you give yourself that full eight hours but you know that if nothing comes out of it that's fine and you've 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 created a system now that you're okay to work and walk away and be like that's fine if that doesn't work but now that you've created this system you know what works and what doesn't and what you like and what doesn't so Mm. probably a bit of a faster process now and shows 10 songs out in a year and a half like (laughs) i never i actually i I, i'm so glad that you said that because i always thought like I had been thinking for the longest time that that's not a not a great um output because like I've just been like because it's so sporadic the event the event the time that I have to the work the opportunities that I have to make music it's like okay if I if I sit on something I can't like I, I have this I had this like fear of sitting on something like yeah. just do it, put it out get it out there mm-hmm. Uh, you know i can't let it sit there i'm even getting antsy at the moment because i have like two songs <laughs> and two or three songs it's kind of ready to go but i want to like put together like a little body of work like a little um like an, an album or an ep yeah. again yeah it'll be kind of like an uh, like an ep or mixtape obviously like album would be it would be great i i have like a little uh I have this big brown sheet of craft paper that i currently have stuck to my desk from the other day because i saw a roll of it in spar when i was going down to the post office and uh this is like a thing that an ex-girlfriend of mine used to do she used to like study on these big sheets of like it looked like tra- like um baking paper or whatever and she just used to go to go to town on it and the sharpie and i said what are you doing she was like oh i just study and she wouldn't use like a4 pads or anything like that she would just use like craft paper and like stick them up on the walls and be able to like yeah she can so she can kind of see her notes like all the time do you know what i mean and i suppose like subconsciously Fair? like like she can visualize when she needs the information she can just she doesn't have to see what's on the sheet she just has to see what's on her wall or whatever the thing is and be like oh okay do you know that sort of way which is her way of learning that's um, really cool i've never heard that that's really cool though yeah, to, especially yeah. be able to like, you need to take a step back and like see. It's like, oh, this actually matches with that thing. This thing yeah. matches with that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, was pretty, it was pretty. It was pretty dope, and and it worked for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a she's a genius. Bit of a weirdo, but she's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's cool. Um, but I did. That I did the same thing for like a May to August plan for uni for like the first time. So it includes like releases that I'd like to do, releases that I'd like to do with like and friends, like video ideas and stuff. And it just means like it's in my workspace. I'm looking at it every day. And if I feel myself too sweet, I'd be like, oh, there's actually something I, I, I should be working on, <laughs> you know. That's good. Giving yourself a bit of structure to it, especially with like nowadays, oh, yeah. you know, you kind of need all the days are running into each other. Like it's mad. Mm-hmm. there's yeah. only one other question i want to ask you about the whole like okay. uh, 70s thing and then okay yeah um thankfully we have another interview because there's so much more things that i want to ask you um <laughs> okay in okay in august 2018 you released trapped by a thing called love on real track by the way but thank you when you put so you put it out on band camp and stuff like that and then <laughs> on spotify i know you released it in 1971 <laughs> why and this was even before it, you were described as being like seventies, like you <laughs> you are all the way down the rabbit hole now. Oh, man. all the way, all the way, <laughs> deep dive. I've tried to get that changed so many times. Oh, like, is, it, nah. is it not like it's not meant to be like that? No, it's not. <laughs> so what happened was like the trap I think I love was a song released by Denise LaSalle in 1971. Right, it's a cover. Um, really. Yeah. How have I never cover. heard that song before? 
great look it up it's it's, it's great i'll send you i'll send you a link it's yeah. a cracking tune yeah it's a great song um so it was a i love that i actually love the surprise people get off when i say that because i didn't say that it was a cover anyway i was just kind of like a little wink and a nod put it out and if people know they know and if yeah it's great it's always it's always a good i always get a good reaction out of that but um i was servicing through lander um and I was releasing stuff myself or whatever, so just put out little bits and bobs. I think Mama, the first first the first uh, time I released Mama, Burning Up and uh, Trapped and another song, Keeping It Red. Simple. They were all, all, Red was with Faction. Red was oh, the first yes. Faction. Yeah, in March. Um, but uh, yeah, so there was like four tracks on land there. And because the way that I had to sort out like the copyright, I had to say that what year was it recorded or what year was that like originally like written or something like that. I put it in 1971. Well, they just took that and they like just slapped it on it. Whatever. It's grand. I've been around for a bit, I suppose. <laughs> I'm an old man. <laughs> it's br- I love it though. Cause I thought it was like you nodding at the fact that like your music is quite like seventies like, you know? Um, I was like, that's really cool. But that's even better that it's not meant to be like that. <laughs> so the latest music video you brought out, Cold Water. It's your first yes. music video, right? Yes. Such a brilliant music video. I love it. It's so simple. One, Thank where you. were you? I want that to go was, there. Uh... <laughs> uh, it's the Vico Bats. The, 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 the actual diving spot is Vico Bats down in Kalini. Yep. I have to, I've never been there before and I like, I love all around there and I've never been to that because I recognized the, like the area that it was on by and I didn't recognize mm-hmm. that exactly. Yeah, so it's easy to miss. Gorgeous. It's, it's a spot that's easy to miss. Yeah. Yeah. But it's actually, it shows up on like Google maps and stuff. It's not yeah. like a super spot or anything like that. You just missed a little walkway down, but it's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's one of my favorite spots. Yeah. Was it freezing in that water? Jesus. I actually seem so comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so like at the end of February and in March, you've got like, especially on the that East was Coast. February, March. Yeah, it was like, it was as cold as it gets. The sea is at its lowest uh, temperature that it is all year. Um, obviously, it's not that cold outside in the air either. Uh, we have no Gulf Stream or anything like that to kind of like warm the, warm the water at all. There's no like currents or anything like that. You've just, just got this cold ass Irish channel. <laughs> Um, it just sits there, um, haunting it was, it, you. Yeah, like I was, it was, it wasn't warm. That's for sure. Um, we had to, I had to keep getting in and out of the water. That was the hard thing. I actually wasn't right for ages after we recorded that. I felt like I was gonna die. I was just like, like shaking. I wasn't able to use. You it look like my very hand. wrapped up in the dart video on the way back. Like you're very wrapped up. It's just <laughs> it's like layers that like no one's seen before. Just like. So please, just don't talk to me. I can't yeah. think of it. Just, just let me sit here, please. <laughs> just freeze, man. Oh, my God. Things yeah. you do for your art, eh? Amen. Yeah. No Amen. art without pain. How did you get that, um, that old quality? Because you have, like, obviously the old kind of style of heck to your music. But now you, on your first music video, you had that kind of old, like, home video quality to the, the music video as well. How did oh, you yeah. achieve that? Was that like a thing in effect that was added after or did you look at like certain different type of cameras? Or something? Oh, it was shot on film. Yeah, it was shot on a type of film that they call Super 8. Yeah. Amazing. Mm-hmm. It looks yeah, yeah. so, so good. Ronan Nissenbaum. Yeah, it was deadly. David Fox, who directed it, and Ronan Nissenbaum, who shot it. So they had, um, we had like discussed this ages ago, or me and, me and, um, me and David had discussed this ages ago that we wanted. A big thing for me is because I'm not so much of like a music video person. Um, I've just not thought not that way inclined um i the the main thing for me was that the, like the visual component complements the the music like I, mm. i'm not too big on like music videos having like a narrative or like being all kind of cinematic if you can do that and you can pull it off deadly that's amazing all the more all the more power to you but it just doesn't seem like my buzz um now I know that said, David actually kind of woven like a very like a, like a very subtle narrative into the Cold Water video, which is sweet. But yeah. um, yeah, I mean, it was just like just as long as the visuals and the and the music complement each other, deadly. So, like, film was one of the first things that we wanted to go to. We were like, it makes sense. It makes so much sense for us to actually use use film. So we got Ronan involved because he's one of the like the OGs when it comes to the current working OGs when it, when it comes to making film you know or making film videos he's done some i think him and Hugh Mulhern did some work together on like um one of luca pan's and kojak's tracks recently um it could have been him it might have been a different guy but yeah there's only like a, a handful of lads who are who are working on film actively and are really really good like the guys from the collective are one of them as well um 
Greg Personal and all the guys, and that well, as far as I know, anyway, that the the, the, the major people work on film is, is is far and few between. But yeah, so it wasn't an effect. It was treated afterwards. The film was treated afterwards, but it was shot on Super 8 film. It's yeah. so cool. I really just love the effect, like that it's all done. And you, so as you, we've talked about, like your music is quite nostalgic. You know, it's futuristic nostalgia. Um, it's you Sweet. have a way of of bringing bringing us back but still keeping us in the present, you know? Okay. Do you think that there, a lot of people are, are doing that now. A lot of people, as you said, are kind of like leaning back towards old styles of music and stuff like that and yeah. trying to bring them forward. We use plugins and effects to get older sounding songs and different effects get older looking videos. But where do you think the line is between copying and paying tribute to a style, like to a certain era of music? Oof. That's a tough one. I don't know. I don't know where that line is, but that's something that we've that that we've always done with music. You know, where people always look to the past when they when they want to move forward. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they always, they always, like all of us are who are making music are sitting on the the shoulders of giants and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like because like it's such a, um, it's so everything that goes, everything that you do, any every like sensory input that you have as a potential whatever is a potential um inspiration i suppose or like starting point for your music whatever you're putting in your ears obviously is going to influence that whatever you touch whatever your surroundings are your i don't know your social situation your economic situation the people you see the the language that you use everything is is going to find its way in here get put in the blender and then put out in whatever way shape or form it is like whatever your medium is whether it's your hands whether it's your mouth it's whatever yeah you know um and the, unless you like it, it it's very it's it for me it's quite obvious when someone is like just straight up mm. copy and pasting something from 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 another time you know what i mean like you can there's a particular band i can't remember the name of it but like people have even caught that they're just like literally that's that's led zeppelin yeah you know what i mean yeah, oh, and i think yeah. you know the well, band that I'm i know about. the exact band you're talking about and they're like the young fellas yeah. yeah and they're like i can't remember their name for the life of me i remember getting really annoyed though because they turned the lead singer turned around and like oh no we've never let, listen to Led Zeppelin it's like yes you have stop lying yes you have like it's so he's like oh we've never listened to Led Zeppelin before it's like then how are all of your songs <laughs> Led Zeppelin and how how do you sing so what like how does that work <laughs> how does that work come on like you're not why you anything. always lie well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's what i mean like that's there there's your line that's like stepping over the line i don't mm. really know what that is, what where, where that point is um because it's so hard to it's so hard to know because like it's such an it, like music and making mm. music is such a like a an ill-defined process it's like and it's an amorphous thing until it's out and you can hear it and it's got like manners on it and it's got yeah. structure and stuff and yeah like there's even points there's even points in my own music where i've been like whoa that actually sounds like something they're like very 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 similar to something that i've heard yeah. but i've acknowledged that and i'm like okay cool if someone picks up on them that, that, that that's cool but in terms of like I don't know. It's such a hard question. Like, like I don't know. Do you mean like where? Do, like, where do we stop in no, terms of no, like? No, I think back, I, I think you like... very much answered it. You know, it's a thing of of knowing what's knowing when it sounds similar, and being mm. like, yeah, that's because of what I'm listening to, but mm -hmm. not going out of your way to copy and paste, and not going out of your that's way being thing. like, I want this sound. If it comes out naturally, that's cool. Okay. And yeah you know yeah. and if someone pulls you up in it in the future and they're like hey that sounds like that it's like well actually that was an inspiration of mine and not being like i've never heard that sound before i don't know what you're yeah. talking about like yeah exactly like just just being able to like just that kind of like level of self-awareness like in music or not is is kind of important just to be able to like i don't know be able to take it on the chin and when someone calls you out on your on your <laughs> your, your faults you know what i mean to be yeah. able to say just be able to be like okay cool i know where this feeling comes from i know where that musical idea comes from and stuff mm. like that like there's even one there's one that kind of comes to mind at the moment as you know i won't say that <laughs> because yeah, slap on the wrist and be like oh, what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> deformation of character or something like that uh, it's my own character <laughs> 
but <laughs> sure but we'll wrap up this interview and okay, if people cool. want to hear more about from yuli make sure you check out tomorrow we are going to be doing another interview diving into everything that yuli is up to at the moment his most recent covers with uh, nilo and inner space uh, all all the things all the above mm. but last question i have i do have for you is yes basically another game that i like to play i like playing oh, games on on my on my podcast it's fun okay uh, especially because i have no friends at the moment um <laughs> <but> <laughs> <laughs> so silently sobs um but we like it's a desert island disc so oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry don't okay. worry like this can literally change in five seconds time like the minute we stop this interview you could come up with another five albums and that's, that's totally the thing fine. that's the thing it's ever changing i can never settle on one okay grant hit me it's okay stuff it up grant. You're about to be picked up on a helicopter and brought to a private island to be quarantined by yourself. You have five albums you can bring with you, and that is it. What are you going to bring? Oh my God, I hate you. I don't actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hate this question. I dread this question. Um, but there was like this thing going around on Instagram for a while. It's like, pick your favorite oh, line, put the them in Bill a Clinton thing. Oh, that, like, that, that, was, that, that was that one too, which I struggled with. But uh, anyway, anyway, yeah, I just struggle with making decisions. Um, okay, one of them, definitely. Um, I suppose I'll just use albums that I've listened to over the years that I never yeah. get sick of, that I can always just kind of go back to. Um, okay, uh, definitely one of them is Taki Okurida, the, the, the Rising Sun one. That's, that's a no-brainer. Um, Oh, mother of God. What else? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> okay, give me a second. I gotta, I gotta need a minute here. Uh, I feel God. like I'm just giving you like Sophie's choice or something. It's like you can either oh. pick your daughter or your son. Why would you do that? Um, let's go with... Um, oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Let's go with... Um, Let's go, Marvin Gaye. You're the man. That 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 one that came out much much later. Um, there's a shorter album of his that I quite like. It's I heard it on the grapevine, the original release. Um, that's deadly. But you're the man is Whopper. Um, there's a pop album in there that I'd love. Um, oh my god, <laughs> how many do I have left? I've got three. <laughs> okay, right. So Marvin Gaye for sure. Um, uh, let's put, uh, let's put Takia in there, definitely. Um. Let's put the Good Morning Vietnam soundtrack in there for good measure. That's Remind you sure. of your daddy. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Let's, uh, let's put that one in there. Um, let me think. Let me think. Oh, my God. Um, oh, my God. You're killing me. <laughs> huh? Um... Ah, because I like I want to pull it from different places as well. Do you know? Um, like I'm not actually bringing you to an island. I feel like if you know, your headphones right now, there's gonna be like steam coming out of your ears. Yeah, like you got you got to you got to commit. Like if you're gonna answer a question like this, you just gotta commit. I feel like your man from High Fidelity <laughs> right now. Um, Jesus Christ! Uh, gotta get gotta get some Aretha in there. Aretha's gold, maybe. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's maybe like Aretha or like Sarah Vaughan or like, um, I don't know, Nina or something like that for sure. But yeah, we'll go with Aretha. We'll go to Aretha's gold for now. So what's that? That's four. They're yeah. Kind of, they're all kind of samey. Like I need, I know there's other stuff in there, but I've just like, just blank it. Like it's like, do you need a nostalgia album? Your own nostalgia? Your teenage nostalgia album? Oh yeah. Okay. We'll roll, we'll, we'll roll with that. Okay. Um, so... If you want. <laughs> No, no, definitely. That makes it easier. Like, please give me direction. Um, so there's a couple of albums or whatever that would be that would be pretty good. Like one of the first albums I ever bought that I could probably still spin uh, would be Hot Fuss by The Killers, um, which is a cracking, cracking Great album. album. Um, oh my god, I made a balls of that. I'm gonna text you later, just being like, no, change it, scrap it all. <laughs> but let's go with that for now. Let's go with Desert Island. So it's Taki Kurla. You got Marvin Gaye. You got Aretha, um, you got Hot Fuss by the Killers. And then... <gasps> we didn't do a fifth. <laughs> okay. Um, to... Let me think. Let me oh, wait, the Miss Gone tra- sign track. Oh, sorry. The, the, um, there the, we uh, go. Good morning, me and Vietnam. Vietnam. 
it's funny that you mentioned Miss Saigon because that's a big one. That's a staple in the house as well. I remember, I remember Rabbit Hole. Remember how deep I am into it? I know. Uh-huh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> let's, god let's... It's just I've just read a lot of like interviews. Don't worry, I'm not like sitting outside your house or anything. It's outside my five K, okay. so I can't. That's um, fine. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Really, really appreciate it. it. A lot of fun. Yeah, thank I thank you so much. Thank um you. Everyone, make sure you check out Yuli's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, his website. One thing I love about your website is when you click onto it, your music starts playing. It's so relaxing. It's like the Thank minute you. you click into your website, it's like, ooh, music. It's so nice. But so I won't tell you how long it took to put that together. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. How long it took, it's worth it. Oh. Thank you so, so much for coming on. You're an absolute legend. And I can't wait to hear all the new tunes that oh, are going to be coming out. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in again this week. You've been awesome. Please keep take care of yourselves. Be kind to each other and have a fantastic week. I'll see you later. <laughs>